All right. <clears throat> All right, so the, the easier but harder way, or the easier but more complex way, um, is actually, so that way is good if you have something that's real complex that <clears throat> you've got to, you've got to draw in stuff from other things or whatever. You want to get the entire shape and then turn it into sheet metal. Um, but usually I like to use the, the, the standard sheet metal way because you can also add, use most of these on that after you do it. Um, but I like to start doing it from sheet metal from the beginning all the way. It just gives it a lot more control on how you do things and you can go back and edit things a lot better. Um, so what I'm going to do... <coughs> is go to base flange tab and then I'm going to pick on the top and I'm just going to draw that shape so that was 2 by 2 finish it and now I can come in and pick my table now I don't have to know how thick the sheets are so I can either pick off the steel table or the aluminum table and I can come down and pick the gauge. And it's going to know the thickness of it for me. I'm not going to have to go look it up off the table or something. Um, I'm going to tell it to, okay, use this. This is my basic K factor for everything. So right now I'm, I don't know another value, so I'm just going to use the default. Um, I know one place I worked, we got down, it, and ours was like 0.47. That for our equipment, that's the one that we used. Um, and so we just kind of we just go to override, and we just put it in. So now I'm just going to hit OK. So there's my base piece. That's just the bottom section. that now we're going to use these tools in here to actually make our sheet metal part so we have edge flange so that's going to be our flanges we have miter flanges for, for different shapes um, and so if we had like a, a different shape that we wanted to, to, to come to a miter we could do that hems jogs we can sketch a band we can do cross breaks um, all from right here and then also editing the corners and then we also have other cuts and holes here that we can use so when I do the edge flange, I'm just going to pick on it. The edge I pick doesn't matter. If I pick the bottom or the top, it really doesn't matter. It's just if I pick, I usually like to pick the side that I'm going to go to. So if I want to bend up, I'm going to pick on the top side. But it doesn't really matter because I can pick that. I can go up or I can go down. And the measurement doesn't really matter now. I'm going to define that later with these options over here. I'm just going to kind of pull it up the direction I want. So it knows which way to go. I can pick this one just to flip it. And grab that to increase or decrease it. <clears throat> so just coming over here, again, I've got the, the bend radius here. I can tell it, take that off now. I can use a, a default radius or my own specific radius. But based on that bend table that, that I'm using, that's the one it wants. Um, I can change, change the angle here. So now it's bending at 135. Now it's only doing a 45 degree bend. Here, the flange length. I'm going to tell it how long I want it to be. So I want it to be one inch long. And these two buttons control where I'm measuring from. So look at it now. Look what happens when I hit this button. What happened? By how much? Probably the width of the radius. The thick of the thickness of the material. Here, it's measuring from the, the corner, so the, this blue line. I don't know that's my edge, but 
what it's doing is it's measuring from where these two lines would meet. So it's measuring from there up to the top. If I do it here, now it's measuring it from the inside corner to the top. So imagine there's a sharp corner, it's measuring from that sharp. And so if I had it at an angle, here it's still measuring, actually it's, it's measuring the, the length of, of that picture's line. It, it should be going to the inside, I think. I'll have to double check. But if you do this one, it measures to the outside corner. So if, it, if you're doing 90s, it's just the thickness, the thickness of the material. So it's measured from either the inside or the outside. So usually, usually we're doing 90, so you want to measure the inside distance or the outside distance. So if I wanted that to be one inch from the bottom to the top, I'd pick this one. But if I want the inside height to be one, then I can pick that one. And now the inside height is one. <clears throat> These over here tell how it's going to line up. So right now what it did is it's taking the inside of my new flange and it's lined up to the outside or that edge. If I do this one, it's going to line up the outside with the outside. <clears throat> so if I want the outside dimensions to be my two inches, I'd use this one. If I want the inside dimension to be two inches, I'd use that one. It's just flipping where that is. This one is going to start the bend where my old one was. This one is going to put kind of um, from the virtual sharp <coughs> on that that inside corner. So I want it to be from the inside. Maybe I'll come back up here and add these other edges onto it now too. So now this box is going to have two inches on the outside measurement and a one inch measurement on the inside. And I'll say OK. I can also go down to custom relief and you can see it's using a smaller rectangular. Even using the same setting, just it looks a lot nicer now than it did before on that last one, right? So now I can even come in and tell it I want to weld the corners. So pick that side, and it's going to come down and, and weld it. So now I've got a nice welded corner there. I can unfold it. Takes that corner that off. I should pull it back up. I see that nice little weld in. You can see also down in that corners. I also had the option to close the corners. So this is kind of like what we were doing before. So I could pick that as my first corner. It picked, now it picked that second one automatically. It's a new that those two are going to go. If you had done this on the previous one, you would have to pick them separately. And the welded corner, corner doesn't work when you convert it. And so I can do all the adjustments I did before here also. Um, and I can also go up here to break corner, corner trim. This is an easy place to do fillets and chamfers. I could do it by going back to features and doing a fillet, or I could just do it right there in this. How I do it doesn't matter, you do the same thing. But if you just use this one, you don't have to go back to that other one. Or you could pick on the edge and go over and just do a filler chapter here too.
flatten. You can see it's kind of just going with it. You can see this bounty box has changed. Just before it was going this way. Now it's going that way. It's kind of figuring out the best way to fit it on the sheet. Or, or at least the, the, the smallest square size to it. Just like the flange did, I can tell it where do I want the hem to be. Do I want it to start at the top of it, or even at the top, or start at the top? Do I want it to get smashed? Do I want this? What spacing do I want? How long do I want that flange to be? Do I want it to do a teardrop or a radius? Mention that. If I told it to go to the top of it, it's going to have to add tears to come down. It just does a little, little relief for that. And flatten it. And it puts it in. So let you guys try that. So build it up with using the base flange, and then using the edge, do a hem on it. Um, we'll get to the other one. Try some of the corners to it, try welding the corners. <clears throat> 